Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. Today, Pastor Jeremy File is teaching on the application of truth. The Bible instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Pastor Jeremy is teaching us on how to apply the truth. We believe today's message is going to strengthen, encourage, and maybe even challenge you. Let's head into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy. The application of the truth is you being a doer of the word. We've looked at a lot of stories in the first seven parts of this series. If you missed all of them, I'm sorry. Uh, if you missed any of them, I'm also sorry. You can go back. We give the CDs for free. Sign up for it at the desk in the lobby. Get our app. They're, they'll be on there. They'll upload on there. Go to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. We give all the sermons ever preached here away for free. Why? The Lord dealt with me freely. I've given you the word freely. You've received it. Freely give it. So we'll sow it into your life. I'm not against if we have someone come in, special speaker sometime, and he sells his products or she sells her products. You ought to buy those. That's good. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with selling, by the way. I had a, someone very concerned that they saw whenever we had our Holy Spirit conference uh, back in May. They said, we saw that product, and we were just thinking about Jesus making his whip. Because here you turned the church into a den of thieves. I said, now that's not a den of thieves. You got you to gotta get straight with stuff here, folks. There's nothing wrong. Just because God dealt with me to give the word away doesn't mean if a preacher is selling it that it's bad. You understand that, right? That's just my deal. I'm going to give it because freely I've received this word. God set me up, as you heard from my dad there. It was very important that he trained me in the word. There's a lot of word packed on the inside of me. I'm thankful, but I didn't have anything to do with that. I didn't buy that. He had to spend some money, but, man, I didn't spend anything. It was freely given, so I'm freely going to give out. Amen. That's just where I am. We've looked at a lot of stories in this series, and all of them have one thing in common. God's power for the miraculous was present. But people had to do something to see that power work in their life. We looked at the story of Naaman. He had to dip seven times in the muddy Jordan River. We looked at a blind man. Jesus spit on the ground. Jesus was a spitter. Some people, they don't serve him. Not my Jesus. He's too dignified. Yeah, right. If you want a blind man to be healed, you never know when you're going to have to. There you go. And some of you, oh, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Hey, got a man healed. You might start liking him. He said, well, Jesus didn't say Jesus hawked a loogie. I know, but he spit. And I don't know if you know, but spitting's improper. Some of you have your snuff can out there. You got to spit. You can't wait till I'm done so you can get there and spit all that nastiness out. Now, I really don't need it. I, I say stuff like, I'm just messing around with you. You come up in here, you're going to get set free from snuff. I'll just let you know. Come on, somebody. It may bind you for years. You come in here, there's freedom in this house. We've looked at this story. There's two lame men we looked at. Both of them lame from birth. One of them Jesus dealt with. He told him, Rise. Tell a lame man, rise. We looked at another lame man because people say, well, that was Jesus. Well, what do you do with Peter then? Peter and John, they went to pray. They met a lame man on their way. And what happened? Hey, they said, he thought they were going to give him money. He said, and they said, yeah, we don't have silver and gold. Let me tell you what we have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Then Peter stuck out his hand. You come here, I'm going to tell you right now, I already know a lot of people in this room, they are Christians and they mean it. They really mean it. They're serious with God. And if you need help, they'll reach out a hand and say, come on, I'll help you rise up and be who God called you to be. But what? God's miraculous power was there to heal lame men that had never walked, blind men that had never seen, Naaman who had leprosy, but all of them had to do something. What about Peter in the boat when Jesus said, Come. Everybody says, you think you're perfect? Try walking on water. We know Peter wasn't perfect, but he walked on water. Why? He climbed out of the boat based on the word, come. Woo! You've got a whole Bible full of words written directly to you. Imagine if you acted on them, what you could do. You could walk on the water of life. Nothing would be impossible. Now, if you just sit there, I'm going to preach the same. But you might as well shout. You might as well have an open heart to receive it today. We're going to dig in the Word. Yeah, we are, because we love the Word. Say it. Thank God for the Word. Go to Philippians 2. Let me tell you a couple of things as you turn there to Philippians chapter 2. It's hard to wrap your natural mind around this, 
But there's something about the power of the Word of God that's released into the life of the individual that decides to act. And the power never hits your life until you act. In other words, think of this. When Jesus came walking on water, we're like, well, that's Jesus, okay? He was perfect. I know, but Peter wasn't, and he walked on water because he got his sandal, and he lifted it up, and he climbed out of the boat. Doesn't seem real spiritual, but he had the word on it. When you have the word on it, don't wait for a super spiritual feeling. Just do what it says. When the word says, bring ye the tithes, you bring the tithes. You don't say, Lord, if you wanted me to do it, you would do it. No. That's rebellion. You just don't realize it. But if we took it into the scenario of your children and you said, make your bed. And they said, you go make my bed. That's a sass mouth. That's a rebellious child that needs some discipline. Amen. And a real father, a real mother would not allow that to go on. They say, no, 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 no. I told you, you go do it. Go do it. And then you watch and see if they're going to do it. If they stood there and said, no, you do it. If it's your will, you do it. You would know. You've got a real rebel on your hands that you're going to have to take care of, right? But yet that's how Christians live their Christian life. I said this in the New Testament. Purge yourselves from the filthiness of the flesh. Well, if God wanted me free from it, I would just be free. No, he told you to purge yourself. He told you to do it. Anything he told you to do, it's on you to do it. What about this one in Romans 6? Let not sin reign in your mortal body. That, that, the way that's worded always makes me think of this. There is a day, I already referred to it, where Jesus is coming. Those that have already gone on and died in Christ are going to rise up out of the grave. Those of us that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet them and the Lord in the air. And our bodies will be changed in a moment of time. 1 Corinthians 15 says, in the twinkling of an eye, this mortal will put on immortality. You're going to get an immortal body. Now, how many of you think you're going to be sinning in an immortal body? No, no, no. But wait a minute. How's God going to know he can trust you with an immortal body? Because when you had a mortal body, you didn't let sin reign. You reigned through Christ over sin. Sin no longer reigns over the New Testament believer. If sin still jerks your chain whenever you want, and you know, I can't help it. Everybody sins every day. You're wrong. When the Bible says in Romans 6, let not sin. You can never justifiably in the courts of heaven say, God, why did you have it where I was addicted and I had a problem to something? I understand there's addictive things. Know this. Every addictive substance is pushed by demonic power underneath it. And the only way that you can resist things that are demonic in nature is through the power of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. I'm letting you know that. There's no other way to resist it. So anything that tries to get a hold of you, whether it's pornography, whether it's snuff, I already mentioned, cigarettes. Some people, well, why are you bringing all that up? Don't you know there's a lot of good people in town. They're deacons in their church. They all chain smoke. Well, too bad they don't hear the truth and can get set free from that. But how are you going to get set free from a cancer stick if I'm addicted to a cancer stick? That's why I finally surrendered in 06, not from cigarettes, but from living for myself. The thing about what Pastor Ricky was talking about when you reject counsel, I deal with that all the time. People, they come and tell me what they're going to do. They're still Lord of their life. They're still Lord of their life. Anytime you come, this is what we're going to do. Just know you are Lord of your life. That way I don't have to counsel later and tell you that. Because I'll tell you the same right to your face. But when you come and say, Pastor, this is what I'm going to do. All right, Lord, go ahead. With a small L. Because, look, here's the thing. Submission is key in the kingdom. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. 
Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. Submission is how you're promoted in the kingdom of God. Not pride, not self-promotion, not doing whatever's best for you. Do you know how many people in this city? I'm, not, I'm, I'm just going, I'm not going to name names, obviously. You should be thankful for that. Uh, but I can name names of people that I know are called here. And secretly they've told me, oh, I don't think I'm called there. I watch you every single service. As soon as I get out of my church, I, I'm going to go see what you're saying. Now, why? Why would you do that? Why not just be submitted to God? Say, Lord, where do you want me? That's where I'm going. That's what I did. I've got Pastor Ricky. As you can tell, he's the real McCoy. Lived in his house 23 years. Never saw the man once cuss, once drink, once do anything worldly ever. How do you explain that? He's the real McCoy. Yet when I'm pastoring, after a month after he handed me the baton, the Lord told me to attach myself to Dr. Barclay. I didn't know what that meant. Months went by. Finally, November, I told him that. 2013. He said, all right. So then I, I said, what does that mean? He gave me a piece of paper, kind of showed what all that meant. Man, he's going to be my pastor. I was like, well, I got my dad. But see, you can't go by just natural reasoning alone. What I needed is my dad here. Because I'm going to tell you all about something here in just a minute about my dad about Mark, about Garrett, about Josh, so that y'all understand how things are set up here. I'm going to tell you about that before we go today. But I'm just letting you know this. God knows what he's doing. And it's no disrespect to my dad. I honor my dad. I will always honor my dad. I would know nothing. I wouldn't be here without my dad. That's obvious, right? But I wouldn't be serving the Lord. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if he had made compromises way back when I was a little kid and didn't have a say. What you do matters. What you do matters. And when you decide to act on the word, God's power hits your life at that moment. Yes. If you refuse to act on the word, then you refuse God's power. See, this is the reason I said when people come and tell me what they're going to do, that they're their own Lord. Because when I read the Bible, I start realizing something. I don't do what I want to do. I do what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is he wants to connect me with someone that's going to make me submit. Now, when I say that, some people are like, what? That sounds so controlling. Hey, you know what? The field is just wide open out here in Amarillo, Texas. There's ministries. They're not going to require you to do anything. But you come here, I just require you to hear the truth, and you decide whether you're going to act on it or not. Good? So when I say they require submission, they teach you from the Word of God why. See how it can get uncomfortable in a service like this? Are you uncomfortable? Don't, don't shake yes, because I don't want to zone in on you. I'm a little uncomfortable myself preaching. But I just decided to get over myself and say what God wants. What do you want? And the reason I'm so bold, I told somebody this this week. They were like, man, you're so bold. I said, I'm so bold about it because I have to be submitted myself. <laughs> if I wasn't submitting myself to someone, I might, might hold back on telling you this, but I didn't write the rules. Submission is the way to go. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. That's in James. So, so get this. That's a great example. The natural mind doesn't understand this. Well, I sure would like to see the power of God in my life. When's the last time you submitted to God and resisted the devil? See, what we want to do is we want God to resist the devil for us. He told you to resist. Well, if God didn't want me in this sin, he wouldn't have tempted me with it. He didn't tempt you to begin with. You were tempted when you were drawn away of your own desires. Wow, 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 wow. The moment anyone decides, I'm going to act on that word. I'm going to stop reading Romans as well. Paul wrote that to the Roman Christians. I'm going to start saying Paul wrote that inspired by the Holy Spirit to me, the believer. 
So when he said, let not sin reign, I'm going to take God at his word. And when sin tries to show up and I feel like sinning, I'm going to use the greatest two-letter word known to man, no. If your dog tried to bite your finger, what would you say? What would you say? Oh, sweet poochie. Please don't do that. Is that what you would do? You can say no to pastor. I can hear that real, real clear. No, you wouldn't. What would you do? You know what I'd say? No. Don't do that. But the enemy comes around. Oh, no, I'm just a man, you know. Got needs, you know. When's the next time you're going to rise up and say no? Just say it one time. No. no. See, you know how to say it. It's real easy. Philippians 2. Are you there yet? Yeah, I gave you plenty of time. Wow. Say it again. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Now, I put it on the screen because I like to roll pretty quick at Accelerate Church. Look at this. Therefore, my beloved, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I was preaching this to a preacher on the phone yesterday. And we got all fired up. We were just talking about life. Next thing you know, he says something. I said, man, and I just unloaded on him. Of course, what he said was, what are you preaching tomorrow? And I said, you would ask me that. I'll tell you what I'm preaching. Get your Bible out. I just started going to town. <laughs> and, and you, uh, <laughs> Daryl, you know him. James was who it was up in Michigan. He said, hang on. I got to get my notepad out here. Hang on. I said, I'm going to town. Look at this. Philippians 2. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed. I didn't just cuss. <laughs> Obey is a four-letter word, but it's not a bad one. As you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Now don't you lie in here. How many of you have ever forgotten to buckle your seatbelt? And you're driving. Don't raise your hand. And you're, all hands were going up all over the place. And you saw a police officer. What would you do? For his eyes only, right? You're like, oh, snap. I'm putting, whoop. Got it on. First time I was ever pulled over, 17 years old. I got pulled over by a DPS officer in White Deer, Texas, right across from Awesome's. <laughs> I was driving back from my granddad's funeral in uh, graveside in Pampa, and he pulled me over, and I couldn't believe he pulled me over. I was in my dad's brown boat. It's what I call it. It's a Mercury. He's a big old long sucker. <laughs> big old soft seats. You know what I do for seats like that now in a car? <laughs> big old seats, man. They just... It's like you could just float down the road, man. It was something else. <laughs> but I, I, he pulled me over. I said, well, what's the problem, officer? I know in those small towns, you got to watch the speed limit. It drops real quick, you know, especially if you're an Esteline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I was in White Deer. So I, I was going 35 in the 35 zone, right? And I knew it. I saw it. So I said, well, what's the problem, sir? He said, you weren't buckled up. Thankfully, I hadn't unbuckled. Because I was still buckled up. And I looked down. The seatbelt's on me. He looked at me and said, have a great day, sir. Well, you know what? I didn't just put it on when I saw him. I already had it on. But how many of you, you ever been in that situation where you see, okay, let's talk about something more common. You're going maybe a couple of miles an hour over the speed limit. You see when you're like, whoop. I obey, I obey for his sight, right? <laughs> These Christians didn't obey just for Paul. You got to get to a level where your obedience is not for any other man. As long as you're trying to obey and it's for a while, I want to make sure that they see this. You don't have the right spirit about you. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 
888-888-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next LifeLink. Your obedience matters. Contrary to, contrary to the popular trends, God doesn't really care. He's not falling off the throne. Don't preach that. That's so harsh. That's so mean. Again, legalistic. Look, I didn't write the Bible, but I claim I'm a preacher of the Bible. My job is to open your eyes to what the Bible places a demand on your life. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who works in you both to will and do for his good pleasure. Get this. Get this. Don't miss the point. When we obey, God is at work. When we disobey, the devil is at work. It's not hard to figure out. This is why rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. It puts a person under a spell. That reminds me of King Saul because that's who it's written about. And I want us to look at this for just a minute. Do you remember King Saul in the Bible? Remember how he partially obeyed God when he said, wipe out the Amalekites? He said, well, I'll, I'll kill most, but the good will save, me and the people will, to sacrifice to you, Lord. Well, that, I, so many people live in the, the American Christian lifestyle just like that. Partial obedience, God's good with it. He's not falling off the throne. But when you read 1 Samuel chapter 13, say it again, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. What you see is that Samuel came to Saul and said, you've done foolishly. Now, listen, God's no respecter of persons. So if it was foolish for Saul to disregard the word of God, it's foolish for you to disregard the word of God. You've done foolishly. You've not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Isn't that something? Saul and his lineage could have actually been where Jesus came from. But instead, keeping the commandment became, mm, that's too hard. What does that mean? I'm going to stop applying what God said to do. Now, the only way, I don't have time to show you all in Scripture, but the only way King Saul became king is because he followed what God said to do. But it was a gradual departure, which is what you see so many times. And it can start just with a bad attitude you have, a disagreement you have. Next thing you know, that can grow. And here's what I want to ask. Your hurt feelings, your disagreement with someone else, what does that have to do with the commandment that God told you when he told you to be planted in the house of the Lord? Why would you do spite to God's commandment based on what someone else said or did or made you feel? How they made you feel? Something to think about, isn't it? He says, you've done foolishly. You've not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. He stayed king after that for a while, but this was the moment. When God speaks it, that's the moment. That's it. Because God's not changing his word. Somebody said, well, he, he would have established it forever. He changed. No, Saul changed. you got to get this right. God's word never changed. See? And this is where people make a mistake. Well, we're new, in the New Testament, and so God's a lot lighter now. He was so heavy in the Old Testament. Here's the thing about this. In the Old Testament, you never find once where he bloodied his garments with the blood of men. But you find in a future day from today, that will happen on this planet. Well, God's not mad at anybody. Read your Bible. If you refuse to repent, you stack up wrath on top of your head. That means he's mad. According to the Bible. Well, God's not mad at people. Don't, don't preach that. That's not going to make anybody want to turn to him. It should. It should. When I was a youngster, I got involved with, uh, back in the day, and some of in this section where the teens are and the young people are not going to understand this, I had to buy cassette singles back in the day because we didn't even have CDs. Uh, this is old school, right? So I bought me a little Walkman, had some fuzzy headphones, little ones, wire things, you know, but they were fuzzy. And I, I would sneak when given the chance. I would sneak around, and, and I, would, I had a guy that would buy them for me because my parents wouldn't take me to the store where you could buy them. He would go, so I'd sneak him a few bucks here and there. I made mowing. Here's some mowing money. 
go buy me this, this top hit and this top hit. And I'm sneaking them around. And I put it in my basketball clothes in the bag. And so I had all this music, and see, there was a rule. My dad ref referenced it, and I was, all of a sudden I felt like a little kid again sitting there a while ago. He said, you know, if you're in my house, you're going to serve the Lord. Well, he meant that, and I knew that. So the only way I was going to have any worldliness about me is I was going to have to sneak around and do it. Now, some of you parents think, well, see, I'd rather them just come out and be themselves instead of having to hide it. No, you wouldn't. You want to make rebellion hard. I mean, this is just straight preaching today. I mean, I'm not putting too much sugar on it either. It's just kind of, it's kind of flying out. You know what I mean? If you got bad teeth, you're like, oh, give me some sugar. I need some sugar. I'm addicted. Anyway, he meant business. I snuck around, had it in my, my duffel bag. Had it, I had snuck it in there because I thought dad will never go through my basketball. Outfit. The one thing I wasn't thinking about is it needs to be washed after you wear it. <laughs> so I know. I, see, I, as a kid, and I found this out having my own kids, I've heard them tell stories to other people, and I'm like, that's not the way that happened. I'm the dad of the own. But see, my perspective is from the dad. There's just from the kid. When, when you're a kid, certain things are emphasized more, and it just sticks out in your mind, makes a mark on your mind. I'll never forget coming home and seeing those single cassettes laid out on a table. Yeah, I, trust me, there's nobody that can make a noise that was worse than what I was wanting to do. I was like, oh no. How did this happen? My plan has failed. Yeah, I didn't keep the commandment that dad had. There was a price to pay for that. I don't remember all the stipulations of it. I just remember it wasn't fun or pleasant. Didn't feel good. Didn't give me the goosebumps. Let me just tell you that. But I thank God now for a dad that taught me You've got to obey because here's the thing. If you have, you, if it, obviously God's wanting to deal with families today. If you are letting your children get away with rebellion, you're setting them up for failure in life. No one ever succeeds that disobeys continually and habitually. And there's no, hey, there's no amount of preaching you could heap to your ear to scratch your itch that's actually going to make it any better. You keep disobeying, you're going to keep walking in the curse. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the series in its entirety. And if you would like to hear the rest of the application of truth, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo, Texas. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.